All right. Um, so let's uh, go back in time uh, uh, for a few weeks and uh, recall the uh, areas under the normal curve. And there were assignments that asked you to uh, compute the value from the mean to, you know, two standard deviations or um, what is the area under the normal curve between uh, a z-score of uh, 1.5 uh, and uh, the mean or uh, what is the area under the normal curve for uh, two sets of values given a mean and standard deviation. So um, this normal curve represents areas under uh, or, or an area equal to one and we can also in uh, a statistical way think of uh, the area under the normal curve as uh, a distribution of probabilities. So um, what we are going to assume here is that Let's say uh, that we have um, a group of test scores, and um, uh, here we have 95% of the area under the curve is bounded uh, between, what, 1.96 and minus 1.96. So um, uh, that would be the, uh, the area where we would say those are typical scores. So let's say that the mean height of people in the United States was 5.8 uh, uh, with a standard deviation of uh, oh a half a foot. So uh, out to here this would be uh, a foot so that would be six uh, feet uh, six inches uh, would be the outer limits of, of someone who is tall but it would be a typical score. Uh, in in this case. But if we had someone who was seven feet tall, then that would be a rare occurrence because they would be beyond two standard deviations of the mean. So out here, uh, outside of uh, 95%, this is two and a half percent here and two and a half percent there, uh, these are going to be called rare events. And so I'm going to uh, provide an example here in just a minute that uh, will put the, um, the notion of rare events into a context. So we have several things going here. One is that uh, recall that when we do a study, uh, we're only collecting data and computing one sample mean uh, or usually just one set of uh, statistical outcomes. We're not doing replications. Uh, we're not doing the experiment um, an infinite number of times. And therefore we've got to estimate uh, what those parameters are. So um, we are going to decide uh, what is considered a, considered a rare event uh, by identifying a, a probability of less than 0 0.05 and, and that is uh, the area outside of uh, just about two standard deviations. All right now on this slide um, what you need to do is to um, take this slide and make a copy of it, print it out, I'll send it to you and uh, any time that you're going to do any type of a statistical test, certainly in this course, but just about in any uh, applied statistics course, this process will work, guaranteed. So, uh, this is the format for a hypothesis test. First, state alpha. So are you going to be testing things at the O5 level? or at the O1 level or what. Generally, in this class, unless stated otherwise, we're going to be testing uh, hypotheses at the O5 level. Next, you need to determine whether it is a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute. Um, state the null hypothesis. Uh, there will be no difference between group A and group B on a particular dependent measure 
uh, as measured by some instrument. So for example, there will be no difference between pilots and uh, non-pilots on uh, scores on the uh, pilot aptitude test um, as measured by the uh, Garvey House uh, pilot aptitude test. Uh, a directional hypothesis, uh, that is a one-tail test, will say there will be, um, that group A will be a higher score or group A will be a lower score than group B on the dependent va uh, variable as measured by some particular kind of instrument. Uh, the non-directional hypothesis, which would be a two-tail test, is only going to say that A is different from B on the dependent variable as measured by a particular instrument. The next thing that you're going to do is to pop these data into SPSS or Vassar Stat or Excel or whatever you're going to be using. Um, and then somewhere uh, you're going to see um, uh, where the p-value is. And in SPSS, it's often uh, goes by different names such as p-value, sig of f, sig, uh, significance. Um, uh, I don't know why they haven't standardized it, but uh, in the past 20 years, it's still not standardized. But you have to look for it. Uh, then what you're going to do is to compare alpha this 0.05 up here to the observed p-value and you're going to use the following decision rules. If p is greater than or equal to alpha, decide not significant. If p is less than alpha, decide statistically significant. And then you're going to draw the conclusions. If your results were not significant, then you will conclude there is no difference between group A and group B on the dependent variable as measured by a particular instrument. If, however, your decision was that it was statistically significant, then you're going to either use your directional uh, research hypothesis, which is uh, A, group A is higher or lower than group B on the dependent variable. Or if it's a non-directional hypothesis, then you're just going to say that group A is different from group B on the dependent variable as measured by a particular instrument. It is always best to use directional hypotheses. However, in order to use a directional hypothesis, there must be evidence in the literature that points you in a particular direction. Otherwise, if it is purely exploratory, then you need to go with a non-directional hypothesis. So what I did was... Uh